माय नेम इज डॉक्टर पी सी पटेल चीफ सॉइल हेल्थ स्पेशलिस्ट भावनगर एंड प्रोफेसर कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर पारूना सिटी सो टुडे द टॉपिक इज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ क्रॉप रेसिड्यू फॉर इंप्रूविंग क्रॉप प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड एग्रीकल्चर सस्टेनेबिलिटी इन इंडिया द हाइएस्ट क्रॉप रेसिड्यू जनरेशन स्टेट इन इंडिया वेर उत्तर प्रदेश 59.97 million tons punjab 50.75 million tons maharashtra 46.45 million tons and andhra pradesh 43.84 million tons so total crop residue in india were 500 million tons and the data of the 2009 government of india new delhi then health and environmental effect of crop burning bangladesh india and pakistan which have large population have more people exposed to toxic emission and may people are being affected by chronic disease so we are observing that uh, after the harvesting of the rice crop paddy crop you will find the farmers are buried because they are hurry to grow the and planting of the wheat crops so they are buried and their uh, s arrive in delhi so the major states are uttar pradesh punjab and haryana they are growing rice and wheat crops as per ministry of new delhi and renewable energy about 500 million tons of crop residue are generated annually in india so i have told that as such crop residue have tremendous plant nutrients however large quantity of the crop residues about 93 million ton is burned on farm and primarily to clear the field for sowing of the successive crop and farmer also burn due to shortage of labor farmer cannot be able to manage the residue so this simple burn it Uh, crop residue also act as an alternate host for many of the insect pests and diseases you know that any crop take the plant nutrients through roots so the plant take the nutrients so from root transplant transfer to translocated to the shoot and then leaves so suppose rice crop or wheat crop are mature so we are taken the grain crop so grain crop also contain all the nutrients then we are harvesting the stubbles or straw paddy straw or, or wheat straw which contain also all the nutrients major secondary micronutrient but the content is lesser as compared to the grain so we are recycle the crop residue then we need not to apply more chemical fertilizers and we can improve the soil fertility physical properties and chemical properties so the major recommendation include incorporation of crop residue into the soil adoption suitable crop rotation as recommended by indian council of agriculture or in soil as provided to the farmers promotion of alternate competitive methods of fertilizing residue in small scale industries for use of crop residue rice straw in paper board panel and packing material and biomass power plant established in public private partnership mode to ensure economic return to the farmer and sustaining soil fertility and full grain production beside prevention of environmental degradation in the country <laughs> so crop residue management is solution to in situ residue burning so you can see that farmers are burning the rice and wheat crop residue so radian meta 2021 from jabalpur punjab reported that crop residue is this stuff that remain in the field after crop harvest 
So it remained in the field after harvesting the main crop, grain crop or wheat crop. Crop residue is available input component for achieving sustainable agriculture because it improves the physical, chemical and biotic properties of soil, increase soil fertility and thereby increases crop productivity. Crop residue management can enrich soil fertility and crop yield by sustaining soil organic So it improves the soil organic matter. Crop residue management practices are most important approach among the nutrient balance approaches. Crop is an asset, not a liability. <clears throat> Impact of crop residue burning. So I told that uh, when we are burying the crop residue, then it creates the climate pollutants. We have seen air pollution, smoke and haze, aerosol and particulates, chronic heart and lung disease, declining soil fertility, loss of soil biodiversity, loss of soil organic carbon, declining microbial bio biomass, soil environment, human environment, and atmospheric environment. But we, the farmers are incorporating crop residue in the soil, then we are getting all the benefit. These are the negative, but when we are incorporated the crop residue in soil, then we are getting the positive response. As for example, Increase soil fertility, increase soil biodiversity, improve climate pollutants, so there will be less air pollution. We need clean air. So in November, December month, the Delhi people have experienced that they have the polluted air. But human beings require clean air. And the clean air is not available, then there will be chronic disease. So don't waste the crop residue. So don't burn the paddy stubble now on from it. So you, you know that uh, the farmers are manage the crop residue, then they can earn. Suppose we prepare bells from paddy stubble and earn money. So you know that it is fed to the animals and the farmer can earn the money from the paddy stubble. Crop residue improves soil health status. Sarkar and Kovarkar 2020 reported that crop residue management is a well known and widely accepted practice and is a key component of conservation agriculture. The crop residue production has been increasing due to input intensive modern agriculture practices. At present, you know that due to integrated nutrient management, the crop productivity has been increasing. So the plant biomass also increasing due to integrated nutrient management. So growing more food for an ever increasing population brings the chance of fast residue generation, ecosystem service, Seeds from crop residue improve soil health status and supplement necessary element in plant. <clears throat> Wind Pew and Kovarka 2021 from China reported that soil water content, total porosity, aggregate stability, cation exchange capacity, organic carbon, phosphorus, and potassium all increase after being emitted with crop residue. The rice stored has positive impact on soil microbial property beside crop residue. <clears throat> play a crucial part in soil remediation. Crop residue as soil amendment have inhibitory effect on some heavy metals, organic pollutant and pathogen. They can also elevate the pressure of saline and alkaline soil. So suppose you are buried the crop residue of the rice and wheat in problematic soil, then there will be improvement of the saline alkaline soil.
progressive management for sustainable agriculture moria and moria et al 2020 from icr new delhi reported that india is facing various challenges in agriculture sector for sustaining soil fertility and food in production besides environment degradation and food security of the country in the event of ever increasing demand of food in production with limited cultivable land so in india the population is about 140 crores at present in uh, 2070 it will be reached to the 170 crores so diminishing the land and we have only one option to increase the crop productivity for unitarian time <clears throat> or we have to grow vertical agriculture farming food grains are a major source of energy and are thus are vital for food and nutritional security besides technological advances and use of machinery for crop harvesting leave be a large quantity of crop residue which in burn by farmer at cheap and easiest method with misconceptions that burning of crops every issue and non soil fertility and health in control weed and insect form so it is wrong you know that that uh, present the farmers are harvesting the crop uh, rice and wheat through the harvesting machine so the crop residue remain in the field and the farmers are buried the crop residue from various study it is concluded that burning of rice crop residue result in heavy loss of organic carbon as well as soil nutrient emit large amount of sub micro aerosol and trace gases like carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide and smoke thereby causing problem to environment and human health hazards moral and mirjai and kork 2021 trial results also indicated that crop residue application can improve soil quality and yield in cereal production system under same yield condition during the first year of application it is crucial to capture at least 50% of crop residue on the soil surface after harvesting agriculture system in similar same arid environment so farmers are advised that uh, whatever they produce the crop residue so 50% have been utilized in his farm means incorporated in this soil and 50% crop residue has been sold to the merchant then incorporation of wheat crop residue by rotavator to improve the soil health so government of india has taken good by steps and they are given the subsidy to the farmers for purchases of the rotavator and root of it is best it incorporate the crop residue easily and less human labor is required so it is attracted from so the uses of root of it are in agriculture provide for soil preparation without the use of lot of work the maximum amount of nutrient is supplied to the plant by turning the soil the better the soil structure the greater the agriculture output and hence the higher the net profit and to know that uh, the government of india has given subsidy for farmer for purchasing the selected machinery including the rotavator effect of wheat and rice straw on organic carbon soil quality and crop yield so in figure you can see that wheat straw returning in the rice field so here wheat straw returning in the rice field then rice growth with wheat straw so you can see the better growth when they incorporate of the wheat straw in the field then rice straw returning in the wheat field so whatever the dry straw has been returned to the field and thereafter planting of the wheat crops so and wheat growth with rice straw so you can see the growth so it is a continuous life cycle the benefit of the wheat taken by the rice and wheat benefit taken from the rice so it is a recycling and 
effect of straw returning on soil organic carbon and rice weight rotation system and it is studied by the GIN 2020 Food and Energy Security. So GIN and Corca 2020 concluded that in the rice weight rotation system returning 1,500 to 4,500 kg per hectare of rice straw and 2,250 to 6,750 kg per hectare of wet straw to the field health helps increase organic carbon content, quality of soil and promote high annual yield. It is the most conducive, conducive to the accumulation of soil organic carbon. So organic carbon is increasing. Why the yield is increased? Because organic carbon is increasing. And you know that all the major secondary and plant micronutrients are linked with the organic carbon. Organic carbon is poor, then all the nutrients are medium or in lower content. So crop residue and soil physical properties. So here you can see that low erosion due to inhibition of runoff. So when there is a crop residue, then there is a low erosion, better moisture conservation, water holding capacity is increasing because less evaporation. Then moderation of soil temperature, temperature is also noise increasing. Then better root proliferation, so root development you can say very long. So it trapped more nutrient from the deeper layer and the plant goes in better and we require less chemical fertilizers. High quality organic matter and greater soil carbon stock. Nutrient recycling and better availability. Better aggregation, soil aggregation is improved greater hyaluronic conductivity. So, Sonkar and Korka 2015 from India crop residue improve physical, chemical and biological properties of soil. Crop residue increase crop productivity. So, our main aim to increase the crop productivity with the help of the crop residue. It can be partially substituting fertilizer nutrient but not completely replacing them. Crop residue has potential to improve fertility status of soil. So you know that you know that there there will be direct relationship with the crop production and fertility status. When the fertility status is rich, then we can produce the higher crop production and vice versa. Crop residue management to reduce greenhouse gases emission and weed infestation in Central India through. Mechanized farm operation. Kenton and Coworker 2020 reported that crop residue burning is a major issue in farmers' field of Indo Gajin Plain and Central India. It emits air pollution and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and adversely affects soil, crop yield, human health, and the environment. Weed infestation is also a major problem and affects overall crop yield. So, when we conservation agriculture with improved weed management produce higher crop yield of 21, 22.5 and 44% in first year and 20.6, 20 and 30% in second year of crop cycle respectively in rice and wheat and green arm. So, all the crop in rotation, rice, wheat, and grain gram, the crop yield has been increased from 20% to up to 44%. Therefore, the adoption of conservation agriculture with improved weed management at a larger scale will generate an energy source for thermal industry, giving the highest economic return to farmers with an environmentally friendly crop production. Startup help farmers earn money from crop residue. So that gentleman has started the startup. So startup help farmer earn money from crop residue. So business partner Ajay Lahane, Uday Nankar and Ansuman Gupta recognized opportunity to formalize biomass supply chain in India. So crop residue could be used to generate energy 
and in turn income for farmers. They started their business Eco Opus to provide service to farmers to collect and process the biomass free of charge. The collected biomass is sold to bulk buyer commercial dairy for fodder or refinery for bioethanol production. By creating linkage between farmer and biomass market, it also creates job opportunity for rural youth by engaging them as village level entrepreneur to provide service to the farmer. Rural family without land are also hired to process and package the biomass. The Ecopus team is participating in UPAI Virtual 2020 accelerated program aimed at equipping early stage entrepreneurs with tools to grow their companies and have a meaningful impact through job creation. So we are very grateful to thankful to Ajay Lahane who have started this startup for the help of the farmers and it also create the job and increase the income of the farmer. Agriculture waste to energy will drive additional income for farmers. So Indian Institute of Petrol, Petroleum, a part of the government agency Council for Scientific and Industrial Research has come up with studies that so agriculture waste and residue can be renewal carbon resource and can be turned into energy products, biofuel and biofertilizer. So agriculture waste to energy will drive additional income for farmers, agriculture post. So farmers are requested don't bury the crop residue, either rice, wheat or maize. So biochar and twin benefits crop residue management and climate change mitigation in India. So you know that uh, from crop, res crop residue, we can prepare the biochar. So crop residues and pyrosis chemical process, then you can prepare the biochar. And when we add biochar in the soil, then we can improve the soil fertility. Biochar also helps for the filtration of the water and when we prepare the biochar from the crop residue, then there will be reduce the greenhouse gas yes, emission, reduce agriculture yield. We are not uh, used the crop residue and burning, then the crop yield has been declined, declined fertility, and so on. So, out of control climate change, what do we do? So what, what we do, we have to don't bury the crop residue in the field and we have to utilize incorporate in the soil or use for the biochar, feed to the animals. So you can see that it is a rice crop management, international rice recitation, rice knowledgeable gram. So you can prepare the rice biochar from the rice straw. So you can see here, so don't burn the residue. So Abhijit and his cover cut 2020 report that crop residue management remain a major problem in the Indian agriculture sector. The in-situ firing of crop residue has been linked to air pollution, global warming, soil fertility decline, others. So when we bury the crop residue, firing the crop residue, then there will be a problem of the air pollution, global warming, decline soil fertility, and so on. Biochar conversion through slow pyrolysis could be one of the techniques for the safe disposal of crop residue. Then production of biochar from rice husks. So from the byproduct of the rice we can prepare the biochar. So by igniting a heap of the material at several points around the circumference with burning bamboo stick. So we have to fire the, with the help of the bamboo stick, the rice first. Then, then letting the rice first burn slowly for eight hours. So we have to burn it slowly and slowly with the rice crust. Then third one, See, 
before cooling the carbonized rice husk with water to prevent them from turning into ash so then letting the rice husk burn slowly for 8 hours then before cooling the carbonized rice husk water to them so we have to cool down slowly so it will not convert into ash so we can prepare the biochar from the rice husk and when we add in soil it improves the soil fertility. The research indicated that when the soil, the sandy soil, you know that sandy soil is poor, and when we are apply the biochar of the rice husk, then we can improve the fertility of the soil. We have prepared the simple method of biochar preparation from cornstore and cluster bean store using two clean method during 2000. 9 at Gujarat Agriculture University Anand campus. So settling of organic residues, I have prepared the biochar from the corn stover and cluster stover. So thermal decomposition, we have taken two cleans. So liberation of gases, methane, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and myself. So final product corn biochar and we have tested corn biochar on corn crop and we observe that application of 5 or 10 ton corn stover biochar along with the recommended dose of chemical fertilizer produce significantly higher dry material and cool protein yield of corn. So managing crop residue to reduce diseases. Burial and Village of surface residue are way to reduce disease inoculant and decrease the risk for some corn diseases, gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, southern leaf blight, and yellow leaf blight. First diagnosis any unknown plant disease in the field. A few plant pathogens like white mold or tobacco mosaic virus are able to survive exceptionally long period of time in soil and crop residue. It is important to identify. This problematic pathogen early remove infected plants promotely, promptly, promptly and follow sanitation procedures specific to that disease to reduce the ability of the pathogen to survive on site. So we have to remove the infested plant having the pathogen. While harvesting is ongoing, remove infected plant or plant part to prevent spread to neighboring healthy plant. So we should have to remove the infected plant with the disease so that there will be no spread of the disease to the healthy plant. So corn residue management is a cultural practice to manage some foliar disease. So I am uh, serving at Sivama Agri Clinic and Agri Laboratory, Bhavnagar, Gujarat. And uh, I am working as a Chief Soil Health Specialist. So, I am requested to the farmer that carry out soil, water and plant testing for plant nutrient as well as plant diseases, diagnosis, bacteria, fungi and nematode from soil and plant sample at so our laboratory name is Sevama Agri Clinic and Agri Laboratory, Bhavnagar, Gujarat, India. The website is sevama.in. Other another firm is Mati Mati Agromart Private Limited, Bhavnagar. The website is www.matimatiagromart.com. So please contact helpline number plus nine one six three five nine five nine five nine five nine. So, we have to make clean India. Such Bharat banana ka yampo, ek adam such ta ki or. And we have to save soil. So, healthy soil, healthy plant, healthy people. Again, I am requested to the farmer that don't burn the crop residue and from residue. You can earn the money and 50% you will incorporate in soil 
through the rotavator, then you will improve the organic carbon aeration, aggregate, aggregation, etc. Then your soil become fertile and you will get the higher crop production and you will get more profit. So thank you very much. And you you have any problem in soil fertility management, then please contact. My name is Dr. PC Patel and my email is patelpc12 at the rate of gmail.com. Again, I repeat patelpc12 at the rate of gmail.com. If you have liked my video, YouTube, then please subscribe. Thank you.